All right, welcome back to our course, um, Religion, Culture, and Gender Studies in Africa. I am still Dr. Yechi Waribopo of um, the Department of Religious and Cultural Studies, University of Port Harcourt, Nigeria. All right, um, we're still on introduction. This is series two um, on introduction, and we're looking at some of the words that are used in um, gender studies. Um, I had mentioned the feminine, gender stereotype, gender equality, and equity, history, which is history from the perspectives of women or feminists. And then LGBTIQ, which presents lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, and queer. And then gender mainstreaming, which is um, considering how any policy affects men and women, then gynocentrism, um, for women focus and sexism, that's hatred or prejudice against women as a sexual group, and misogyny um, is also prejudice or hatred for women. And then we have matriarchy system where the women rule, and patriarchy system where the men rule. So what's the relevance of this course? You know, um, gender studies or gender as a word has become a cliche where you see people use it randomly without necessarily having an in-depth understanding of what it means. And as a result, it has been misused. People have, um, think that um, gender is a word used by feminists to white men and all manner of misconceptions. You know, but um, because of globalization and cultural contact, people are becoming increasingly aware of who they are, people are beginning to discover and rediscover themselves. And then because um, other cultural, other cultures are rubbing off on Africans, African women are beginning to also stand up for their rights and their humanity. And so it's, it becomes important at this um, stage in history that we give gender um, a kind of place in academics in order to understand how gender affects us as Africans, because it has been argued several years. Um, gender um, is not exactly the same all over the world, even though the word gender and gender study, studies started um, among uh, middle-class white women, um, but it has spread into different cultures, taking its own form and shape in these cultures. So gender in Africa is not exactly the same thing as gender elsewhere. Because in Africa, we have class struggle to um, take care of. We have um, um, racism to handle. And um, a relationship between men and women in Africa is um, basically complement, uh, it's, it's complementary, kind of we complement um, one another, perhaps, unlike what we have elsewhere. All right, so um, next, we're going to be considering gender theory. You know, theory, like we know, is um, a set of facts, assumptions, or principles that are used to give rational explanation to us and affect relationship of an observed phenomenon. And then there are a lot of gender theories that we have Eurocentric gender theories that, that is to say that um, these are gender theories that emanated from Europe. That is, we have masculinist theories, we have feminist theories, we have the queer theory. You know, queer theory is a theory that is used to study, you know, LGBTIQ, like we earlier, you know, explained, and it explores categories of gender and sexuality and challenges the notion of identity. You know, um, this is where people are beginning to make a case for recognition and acceptance in the society for lesbians, gay, and uh, everyone that falls under the queer category. Okay, but in this course, because our focus is on Africa, uh, we want to look at Afrocentric gender theories. And most of the gender theories we have in Africa that are Afrocentric are actually feminist theories. Uh, the African men have not really come up with any theory at all because basically it's been the women you know, saying we are marginalized, we are oppressed, we are suppressed, we are silenced, and all of that. So we have African feminist theorists and theories. Okay, the first um, African feminist theorist um, is Alice Walker. The theory, um, theory is a woman is talked about um, 
recognition of women and then women supporting themselves and helping themselves. And um, this worker also supported some kind of sexual relationship between women, that is lesbianism, which people have criticized and said it's absolutely un African. And then we have them. Um, Akachi Ademora is the most um, in sense feminism where she described the African woman as the snail. You know, the snail is is quite slow, it's a slow animal, yet it's dogged, it climbs high mountains, rough terrains, and all of that. And when it senses, you know, um any danger, it falls back into its shell just to come out again when everywhere is settled again and it moves. And then he said that's how the African woman's relationship should be in the society. She should know when to call into her shell and she should know when to come out to ask for her right. For her, by so doing, the African women will be able to gradually with their well-cooted mouth, you know, the snail is, um, has this um, slippery content, you know, so we believe that with their well-cooted lips, uh, by, so, uh, by, so, by that she means by speaking nicely the right words, they will be able to um, break through and break even with respect to their struggle um, for um, emancipation of patriarchy. And we have Obama Nemeka's Nego Feminism, our theory is Nego Feminism, which talks about no ego feminism. That feminists shouldn't, you know, um, add ego to their feminism and they should learn how to negotiate, need no ego, as a nego now means it's a kind of a prefix to negotiate. So negotiate their way through and within um, uh, patriarchy and African culture, basically. Um, empowered the men more than women. And Molara, Molara, let's see, when we talked about Stiwanism, which um, is an acronym, um, Stiwa is an acronym that, is, that stands for Social Transformation, including women in Africa. Again, asking for that transformation. Okay, and then we have African humanism, just like uh, humanism, but it's slightly different from humanism, which was propounded by Clenora. Um, Thank you. Come up again in this budget series.